everybody. So today we're going to talk about how to name polyatomic ionic compounds and how to write formulas for them. So first of all, the thing that you need to know is that polyatomic, polyatomic ionic compounds contain more than two elements. That's going to be the major way that you identify them. So anytime you're looking at a formula or if you're looking at a name, if you see more than two elements, if you see three or more elements, you should immediately say, that's a polyatomic ion, and I need to take out my polyatomic ionic uh, table or chart. Um, polyatomic ions are teams of atoms. They move together, they work together, and they all share one single charge. So let's take a look at this first thing I have here. Magnesium, that's easy. That's straight off the periodic table. So if we're going to write that name, I just write magnesium. C, oh, I have M, G, C, and O. Okay, I know that's a polyatomic. So I take out my polyatomic table, my polyatomic chart. I've listed this for you in the resources on CTLS. I also sent it out on Remind. I look up on that table. I'll bring that back up here again. Everything here has a negative one charge. Everything here has a negative two charge. There's a few that have a negative three. And there's only one that has a positive one. It is ammonium. It's the only positive polyatomic ion that we use in this class. And every single one of you are going to forget it at least three times. So I look up CO3 and I find out that that is carbonate. So I write magnesium carbonate. And I'm done with the name. Not that hard. Let's try the next one. Oh no, look at all of these letters. Shh, calm down, no stress, it's easy. You know the name of Na, that's sodium. If you don't know it, look it up in the periodic table, no worries. Now we have this whole mess here, C2H3O3. Start on your polyatomic chart. It's not ammonium, so let's go through the first column Look, C2H3O2, it's that very first one, acetate. This is sodium acetate. When you were a little kid, did you ever mix vinegar and baking soda? When you were done, when everything had stopped fizzing, what was left over inside that bowl or that cup was sodium acetate. So you've made this chemical and you didn't even know it. H2O2, that's not water. Water is H2O. This is H2O2. So, hydrogen. Again, that's easy. You know that. This O2 is a little weird, all right? Um, this is a polyatomic ion. It's the only one that only contains one element. You just kind of have to learn it. It is a little tricky. That's why I wanted to practice it. Go through your chart and look, and you find out that O2 with a negative two charge is peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. Hey, you probably have that in your medicine cabinet. Now you know what hydrogen peroxide is. It's H2O2. It's not water, don't drink it. That, that second oxygen makes a huge difference. It takes it from something necessary for life to something that's poisonous, so don't. That's a quick overview on how to name things. Now let's look at how to write the formulas. Lithium hydroxide. We're going to write the symbol for lithium, Li. Just look it up on the periodic table. Hydroxide. That is a polyatomic ion. So you're going to look on your chart, and you see hydroxide is OH, and it has a charge of negative 1. So I'm going to write Li for lithium, and I'm going to write OH for hydroxide. Balance your charges. Lithium is plus one, hydroxide is minus one. It's balanced. We don't have to do anything, leave it alone. Let's come on to the next one. Ammonium sulfate. I've had people say, miss, miss, please tell me, what's the atomic number of ammonium? Mm-mm. Remember I said that all of you were going to forget this at least three times? Ammonium is the only positive polyatomic ion that we use in this class. It is NH4 and it has a charge of plus one. So we're going to write plus one, and we're going to write NH4. Sulfate. 
Sulfate is a polyatomic ion. You find it on your table. It is SO4, and it has a charge of negative 2. SO4, and it has a charge of negative 2. That does not balance out. We need two ammoniums to balance out the sulfate. So I'm going to write a 2. Uh-oh, wait a minute. If you look at this, this says 1N and then 42 H's. That is not what we mean. In order to show that, no, this is not 42 H's, this is two copies of ammonium, we write parentheses around the ammonium and then put a two. Now it is clear it is two copies of this ion that's inside the parentheses. Let's move on to our last one, calcium nitrite. Now you have to be careful. Nitrate and nitrite are two different things. Sulfate and sulfite are two different things. Phosphate, phosphite. The eights and the ites are different. The ites have one less oxygen, but they have the same charge and the same um, main atom, and the same, um, then they both have oxygen. But the ites have one less oxygen. You don't have to memorize this, look it up. Calcium nitrite. I'm gonna write Ca for calcium. I'm going to look up nitrite. And I find out that nitrite is NO2, and it has a negative one charge. I know that calcium has a positive two charge. I need to balance this out. I need two nitrites. So I'm going to put those parentheses around my nitrite, and I'm going to put the two. Quick note about the parentheses. You guys are now going to try to put parentheses around everything. Stop it. You only put parentheses around polyatomic ions. You never put parentheses around, I'm going to make this red like a red traffic light. Okay, red traffic lights are bad. I use green for good. You are never going to put parentheses just around one element. No. You are never going to put parentheses around something when we only need one copy of that polyatomic ion. No. You only put parentheses around polyatomic ions when you need more than one copy. Real quick review. Polyatomic ions almost always contain more than two elements. Peroxide is the only exception. They are teams of atoms that work together and they have a single charge for that whole team. Look it up on your polyatomic chart. There's no need to memorize this stuff. I will make a separate video on a little trick you can use to memorize it. Uh, if you are planning to go into a chemical heavy, a chemistry heavy field, or if you're going to uh, take chemistry in college, but in this class, use your chart. You name the first thing, you name the second thing, and you might need to look one or both of them up on your chart, magnesium carbonate. If you see something that's very long, don't panic. It's probably just on your chart. Okay. Last thing on your formulas, you always need to balance your charges. Thank you so much. I hope this helps.